Hey guys, Moan Pober here, and in the next video, you're gonna learn the two ways you can buy a business. You can do an asset based purchase or you can do a stock based purchase. You're gonna learn the difference. It's gonna be just a conversation I had me and my CFO, John. Uh, I mean, just based on a question that we had. So you'll see uh, my response to the simple way that I look at things. Um, I mean, my background is not in finance or numbers or anything like that. So you see how I look at those things at the level that, in my opinion, you don't need to understand more than that when you're looking to buy a business. At the same time, John will give the better explanation. He's gonna obviously expand on it and you'll learn much more. I mean, he's brilliant. You'll see exactly what are the two ways to buy businesses. Um, if you like this type of content and you like to learn how to buy businesses, um, even if you have no experience or capital, just subscribe to the channel, like this video and comment below. Let me know what questions you have or just give me any feedback. I'd love to hear back and um, I promise to, to reply as well. So yeah, enjoy, let me know what you think and uh, I'll see you soon. And so, so yeah, we had a question from um, one of member, our members from Tom on the difference between asset purchase, asset purchase and uh, stock stock purchase. So I thought, yeah, let's let's talk uh, with John, and I'm sure John, you can explain things better than me. But I'll I'll just give this simple version of how I see things, and I'd love for you to to correct me and just I guess give give the better version. So the way I see it is that when we buy. Um, so, so you have two options, right? When you do asset purchase, you basically buy the business without the assets and liabilities, which means you can't raise money from financial institutions, from uh, asset-based lenders, uh, because there's there's basically no credit for the company who's going to buy that asset purchase. When we buy, uh, when we do a stock purchase, we buy everything. We buy the business as an ongoing concern with the assets. Um, and liabilities. So I just I just gave my version for the people who potentially are going to watch this video, and and they won't understand the simple version. But yeah, I'd love to hear what what you what do you think, John? Well, I mean, the, the whole idea of asset versus uh, shares. We're a little bit reversed. We like to buy shares because we want the credit history to be able to borrow money against the assets to fund the closing payment. Traditionally, purchasers usually prefer to buy assets because they don't want to acquire the contingent liabilities associated with buying the shares. And that is the entire legal history of the company. So trade buyers like to buy assets, um, but we want to buy shares. So that should fit because usually the sellers like to sell shares because now you're buying something from an individual and that's a capital gain. If you're buying assets out of the company, then that's not a capital gain anymore. That's basically income. So that's all taxed in the hands of the company as income. So the insistence that so many people have uh, that we deal with to sell, and Carl's made this point in conference call or partner calls already, um, it doesn't make any sense for them because when they sell the assets out from the company, those assets really just uh, represent income to the corporation and is taxed as income. And then, of course, it's got to flow back up to the shareholder. Then there's another level of taxation. So uh, these people, it would make all the sense in the world for them to want to sell their shares. I think the reason why they want to sell the assets is because they want to strip up stuff out of it before they sell it. You know, they want to say, okay, you can have this asset, this asset, and this asset, but we're keeping the cash, you know, we're keeping the accounts receivable, et cetera. So I think the uh, idea behind them wanting to sell assets is a way to try to goose under the table what they're going to get out of this deal because they're going to get the value of the company, you know, their 3x or 4x multiplier, plus they're going to try and, and strip out the working capital assets. So I think that's why uh, a lot of people um, like to, well, not a lot, but some people want to sell the, the assets rather than the shares because tax-wise, it makes all the sense in the world for them to sell shares, get a capital gain, than it is for a corporation to sell assets and have that taxed as income. So that, yes. that, that, that in a nutshell kind of sums it up from, from the, the sort of the finance perspective. Um, and, you know, we make the point, and this is something that we have to, I guess, talk to the partners about, is we have to be on the, on the lookout for people who want to sell this thing. Okay, you know, it's going to be, you know, cash-free, debt-free, all the things that the brokers like to do to try and, you know, goose the purchase price. You know, this is an asset sale that's, that's uh, you know, that's uh, cash-free, debt-free. I've seen that quite a few in these, in these offering memorandums. Well, that's a big stop for us. We have to say, well, no, that's not actually the way that we want to proceed. And see that- yeah, and, that's, and that's something I'll just add and say, so I won't forget. So when partners, and those, those things are only, the only challenge that we, we have is only when, when they find deals from brokers. So I just want to tell to partners that, yeah, when, whenever a broker is telling you, hey, this, this is going to be an asset purchase, just tell them, sorry, we're not doing business this way. We're looking to buy, we're looking to do a stock purchase. And we're looking yeah, to just buy the assets and liabilities as a going concern. 
Which and going 99%. Percent, but... Yeah, and 99% when you just say that and say, hey, this is the way we do business, they'll, they'll, they'll just come back to you and say, yeah, we're good with that. So... And I, mean, I guess the yeah, other thing we, too, we, should, we should tell the broker is that if there are surpluses in terms of uh, accounts receivable, if there's surpluses in terms of cash uh, above and beyond what's required for the working capital of the corporation that, you know, we expect to pay for that. So we don't expect to get, you know, free a half million dollars in cash. If that half million is surplus to require working capital, we, we add that to the purchase price, but we do want it kept in the business. Yeah. So you see, yeah. I mean, surplus cash is much preferable to property. Many people want to sort of drop property in there, but there's a problem with property. That's probably worth a video as well, because you have to add all of the of the of the value of the property to the you know the cost of the deal, but yeah. you only get to finance eighty percent of it. So in essence, we got to come up with the the down payment, which just adds to the cash requirement that we have to deal with. But surplus cash is not like that. If there's two hundred thousand surplus cash, yeah, we're going to pay for it, but then we have two hundred thousand dollars full to, um, you know, to include in the closing payment. So surplus cash is good because it increases the closing payment, so to speak. So that's yeah. why, you know, there's a difference between those two, but we, yeah, we have to borrow against the assets. So if it's, if it's, if borrowing's involved, we want to buy the shares, not the assets. Love it. Good stuff. I think that definitely makes sense. And I hope uh, yeah, people are going to learn something from the if we have a seller who owns shares in an operating company that, that uh, wants to be sold, they want to get rid of that company, that operating company has business assets. And so the seller owns the shares, the operating company owns the business assets. But that means when a buyer comes along, they have two options. Option number one, buy the shares. Option number two, buy the assets. Notice that there are two different entities that you're dealing with in both of these. If you buy the shares, you're dealing with the individual seller. If you're buying the assets, Right? The other party is the operating company. And so the question is, which do we prefer? What are the issues associated with this? And let's try and get a little clearer on why this is an issue in some sales. Let's look at it this way. If a buyer comes along, and it's a typical buyer, and a typical acquisition, usually the buyer is a corporation. Let's call the corporation Trade Co. Because the idea is trade buyers, other corporations, when they make an acquisition, they do prefer to buy assets. So if a trade buyer comes on the scene, yeah, they prefer to get the assets rather than buying the shares. Why do they prefer the assets? The big reason is they want to avoid the contingent liabilities. They want to just let those contingent liabilities stay with the seller. They'll acquire the assets. What do we mean by contingent liabilities? I don't know, these are, this is the baggage that uh, could be associated with the company. Does the company have tax issues? Do they have litigation issues? Do they have warranty issues? Sometimes those aren't obvious. Sometimes they're buried a little bit, right? There could be environmental contingency issues. I mean, the list is very long. If we buy the shares, we now own the operating company. All those contingent liabilities transfer over to us. If we buy the business assets, however, all those contingent liabilities stay with the seller. And so that's one of the number one reasons why trade buyers prefer to buy assets rather than shares. Number two, when you buy assets, they can be bumped up again in terms of their cost base, and they can be depreciated all over again. Right? That's kind of nice from a tax perspective. And of course, if the trade buyer buys the business assets, they only have to buy the business assets that they want, right? which is not necessarily every asset owned by the operating company. What about the seller? What's the seller's perspective? Well, in a typical acquisition, a seller much prefers to sell shares. Why? Because if the sell the shares, then the gain is capital in nature. Right? And that means it's taxed lower in the hands of the seller. You get a preferential tax treatment if you're selling shares because capital gains are taxed at a lower rate uh, than business income. And you want to avoid double taxation. Look at the way this would work. I mean, if we sold the business assets, who gets the money? The operating company does. And the operating company, of course, has to pay tax on a yearly basis. Usually when you sell business assets, that's just normal business income. You've got to recapture depreciation on the assets, etc., etc. So this is business income from the operating company they have to pay tax on. And of course, once the after-tax proceeds are in hand, they have to be distributed up to the seller. That's a whole other level of taxation, this time personal. So when you sell assets, 
very often it's double taxation. One's corporate and one's personal. Why do uh, sellers prefer to sell shares? Because it's a much less complex transaction. All right, so that's a big benefit to the seller. Now, that's the typical scenario. We, however, are different. Most buyers, trade buyers, want to buy assets. However, we're not trade buyers. We want to buy shares. Why? Because of the fact that the gain is capital in nature from the seller's perspective, that sort of technically means the buyer should be able to get away with paying a little bit less. You know, if we buy shares, right, we're playing into the hands of the seller, and so therefore, uh, we really should be able to, uh, you know, maybe get a little bit better, better price when you're buying shares than assets, because there is no double taxation being imposed here. But here's the big one. Why do we want to buy shares? Because if we didn't buy shares, what would we have to do? We have partners, we have the you know, the accelerator group, they'd have to you know, incorporate a brand new company, let's call it Acquire Co. Acquire Co. would acquire the business assets, but of course, to make a closing payment, we have to borrow against those business assets, but how is it that Acquire Co. is going to borrow when it's only a one-day-old or a two-day-old or a week-old company with absolutely no credit history? So the big reason why we want to buy shares is number two. Right? We want to buy shares so that we can tap into the operating history of the company that we're buying, have that company borrow the money and use that to finance the closing payment. So this is really critical. We prefer to buy shares because we want to be able to tap into the credit history of the company that we're buying. And of course, we want to acquire all the assets. Uh, you know, selling the shares means you know you get everything in the company. We want to use those assets to collateralize loans, you know, collateralize the loans we're going to use to fund the closing payment. In other words, when you buy the shares, you get everything in the company. If you buy the assets, and there's a lot of, you know, what exactly is going to go and what isn't. It's just a simpler and cheaper transaction to buy shares. So we buy shares, not assets. This one, it's important in, in, in some deals. Other ones, not as important. But there's no doubt that you can create stronger terms with stronger warranties, identifications, stronger reps, everything, when you are buying uh, shares off a seller. You know, we can kind of force that seller into coming up with pretty strong language when it comes to the warranties and identifications they're making. It's a little more hard or difficult to do that uh, when you're selling business assets out of an operating company. So that's kind of the perspective that we're looking at. Just to kind of wrap it up, why don't we want to buy assets? Well, we sort of covered this generally, and let's talk about it specifically. This one I touched on, we do need a credit history to borrow money for that closing payment. Here's a big one. When you buy assets, cash isn't typically an asset you buy. I mean, it'd be kind of silly, you know, spending cash to get, to get cash. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So the cash doesn't usually come with a deal, which means that we have to recapitalize the company after an asset purchase. Right, to reconstitute the working capital. So the cash didn't come with it, so we have to come up with cash to capitalize that company, this acquire code that's only a week or two old, and so that just sort of adds to the financing burdens of the deal. And if you buy the assets, you have to start all over with legal agreements, employment agreements, etc. It gets even more complicated. IP rights, work for hire agreements, etc., etc. It's fairly burdensome when you buy the assets, and then you have to start over on all the legal paper. And sometimes you don't have to start exactly over, but it's an issue nevertheless. So what's the conclusion? Most buyers prefer acquiring assets. We prefer acquiring shares. So that's the big difference between uh, the typical trade buyer and, and, and our approach. And this throws off the brokers. They naturally think that uh, uh, buyers want to buy assets, and very often they'll even put together an asset deal, or they'll be very surprised when you tell them you want to buy all of the... Uh, all the assets and liabilities as part of the company when we acquire the shares. But we have our reasons for doing it, which I've already explained. So in conclusion, I mean, you got to find out whether the seller is proposing to sell shares or assets. I mean, it's important. You should be able to read through the materials, figure that out, and include though that information in the notes you submit with your deal. All right, so let us know up front. Right? Are they proposing selling shares or assets? Remember, 
I guess this is the big takeaway from this uh, this little video presentation. We buy shares. I don't think Carl is totally against, in special circumstances, trying to put together an asset deal. It's not like we've never bought assets before, uh, you know, individually. I've certainly been involved in asset deals myself. I mean, share deals are um, are better from the seller perspective. But the point is, we want to buy shares. That's the go-to. That's the default position. Just because we're not completely shutting down the idea of doing an asset purchase doesn't mean if the memo says or the IM says we want to sell assets that we don't have to sit down and talk about that, think about that, talk about whether the seller is absolutely wed to the idea of selling assets or not because most of the time we're not going to be interested in acquiring the assets.